Good evening everyone, my name's Josh. I'm going to be speaking to you on Foundations to Fly just after Easter Sunday. Now, on Easter Sunday we, we remembered and we celebrated the hope that the Christian faith is in being able to know God again through what Jesus did on the cross. Our sin separated us from God, but the triumph of the cross is that it triumphed over sin, making a way for us to have life and life in all of its fullness now, and life in eternity with God. Jamie uh, spoke and he said one thing which I thought was really poignant and really helpful. He talked about um, the stone was rolled away not to let Jesus out, but to let us in. And I think it's important as we go into this evening's talk to remember that actually the victory on the cross sets a foundation in itself, in and of itself, for us to to live in freedom, for us to live knowing Jesus and everything that that can mean for us. And this truth, alongside some other things I want to bring out of today's passages, are what I think we can build as a foundation to fly right now. Outwardly, we are in lockdown. But this evening, I'd like to briefly explore how inwardly we can be free to fly. Soar to new heights. Physically, our bodies have been told to stay at home. But this evening, let's touch on a few areas where spiritually we don't need to be limited. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter seven. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it didn't fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Um, our reading from Matthew 7 is a familiar reading to, to many of us, especially those of us who've been to Sunday school. It's one that we get told as children all the time. And it's, uh, it's the wise man who built his house on the rock and the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And I think if we grasp hold of some of the truths in this, then actually these can be utterly life changing and can really set us up well and, and are talking about foundations that span into all areas of our lives. In Jesus is talking and he says, hear these words of mine and act on them. He says, somebody who builds his house on a rock is like somebody who hears the words that I say and acts upon them. And the passage goes on to say the opposite about those that hear them and don't act upon them. They are like people who've built their house on the sand. And what's interesting about this passage, in both tw verse 25 and 27, it says exactly the same thing before the storms come. 
It says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew against the house. This is the house on the rock and the house on the sand. The same thing is happening to both houses. You see, it's not if the storms will come, it's, it's when. And actually our foundation, when a storm comes, when something is tricky, our foundation is really important. Will our foundation be on Jesus, on the rock? Or will our foundation be on whatever else we've decided to build our lives on? Things that don't last, things that aren't eternal, things that in many ways are like the sand in this passage. You see, in all seasons we need our foundation to be sure. Because storms will beat against our house. But our houses don't have to fall. Will we have a storm and wobble a bit and stay standing? Or will we have a storm, wobble and fall over? The hope of Easter reminds us that the rock of ages came down to earth in the person of Jesus to know me and to know you so that we can walk with him and do life with him today. He, he left for us the Bible as our instruction and the Holy Spirit to help us understand the instruction. This is the firm foundation that, that this passage is talking about. Yet yeah, maybe we look at where we are now and we see it more about like a foundation to survive, let alone a foundation to thrive. Uh, our other reading from Isaiah chapter 40, and it reminds us of some reasons that Jesus is such a firm foundation. It reminds us that even when we are rocked by a storm, he does not grow tired and weary. And even when we don't know what to do, his understanding is much greater. His understanding no one can fathom. We get our strength from him. When we hope in him, that strength is renewed and that is what, what it says. It says we will be able to kind of, does it say we can plod on? Well, no, actually, it says way more than that. It says that we can soar on wings like eagles, not like a duck. You know, a duck kind of flaps a bit and tries to get somewhere. It doesn't look very majestic. It seems to work really hard for very, very little. But when you watch an eagle fly, an eagle soars. It, it soars high with minimal effort. It's flying on the wind. And actually, when we build a foundation on Jesus and put our trust in him, that's how it looks for us. And my prayer is that this actually can be a time where if we set our foundations right, we don't have to cower and wait for the storm to be over. And instead we can fly and we can soar high above it, trusting Jesus, being patient, knowing his joy increase in us. And I want to talk about three areas to fly today. I don't know what you find hardest right now. Um, but I think there's three areas that I think I'm struggling with most. So I'd be a bit vulnerable with you guys. These are the three areas I'm finding really tricky at the moment. Number one is patience. Uh, number two is trust. And the third one is, is joy. And my foundations for these are so often not on Jesus um, or on what he says about me. I'm either too tired to remember or too apathetic to care. And the reality is, is that I look a little bit more like a one-legged duck than a majestic eagle. And so the first area, I just want to kind of unpack the three things that I'm finding difficult and kind of say how maybe if my foundation was on Jesus, I could instead fly in these areas. And I, I reckon there are areas for a lot of us that we can relate to. Uh, and maybe this is exactly the three areas you're struggling with as well. But I'd encourage you, if there's other stuff, try and apply the principle to, to that thing. So the first thing, patience. So... Sometimes I have wonderful parenting moments, both in this season and out of it. And I kind of, at the moment, am flitting between those moments and shouting matches with my kids. My patience is short. I go between a place of waiting for lockdown to be over, quite chilled out. I'm feeling very frustrated in the limitations of what it looks like at the moment and, and hate the inconvenience of it all. But like Isaiah 40 talks about feeling weary and weak uh, and I often find myself stumbling I, I can really identify with those verses in this season I'm quick to think the worst uh, saying to my eldest stop crying what's all the fuss about and actually she was just really sad because we'd thrown away a blanket we didn't know she was really attached to and actually what she really needed was me to be patient and give her a cuddle and our Isaiah passage reminds us that we renew our strength when we have a posture of hope in Jesus so what if we used this time to set our foundations in Jesus afresh, in the area of patience, see our patience increase, see it fly higher than we ever thought we had capacity for. What if we left this season knowing how to be more patient people? If we put our foundations in Jesus, I believe that that might be possible. 
My second one, I think I'm finding a bit tricky at the moment, is trust. And whether it be a trust that God is good, uh, I feel like I know that. Or whether it be a trust that God is in control, and most of the time I feel like I know that as well. Or whether it be a trust that that God has a plan in all of this, or that I can trust him day to day. I'm aware that if we choose in this time to build our life on the foundational truths that he is we read in Isaiah, an everlasting God, the creator of heaven and earth. It starts, do you not know? Have you not heard? He doesn't grow tired and weary. Trust him. He doesn't grow weary. Trust him. He doesn't give up. Trust him. We don't understand it all, but we can choose to trust afresh today in the one that does. In the one that does understand what is going on. And we can see our trust and our faith increase as we trust him in things in prayer. What are you praying about at the moment? We can spend time in his word, learning who he is and who he says we are, and trust in those truths, even when they don't feel true, over our lives. Those who put their trust in God will renew their strength, not just to get through, not just to get through this season, but to fly. What if we use this time as one where we set a foundation on Jesus, afresh and in an area of trust? We, we see our trust in him increase as we get to know him better, see fly higher than we ever thought it could see our trust soar and the capacity that we have to trust God in all areas of our life go up and up and up are we willing to put the time in making that foundation for this season to delve deeper into his word to pray beyond our comfort zone some people are unbelievably busy but for many of us we have space for some of us but space like we haven't had for a very very long time I don't know if you've heard about the goats in Wales, in a place called Landudno. And um, while people were staying inside due to lockdown, the streets were pretty deserted and some new residents moved in. The town went from being a ghost town to a, a goat's town and they were wandering around the high street and causing all sorts of mischief. And you may have seen some of the videos that people have taken on social media. You see, while everyone was at home, there was space. And it's a known thing that when space appears, something fills it. The question is, what are we going to fill this space with? Do we fill it with a couple more Netflix series? Do we fill it with a little bit of extra snacking? I know I'm a little bit guilty of that one. Maybe we'll find good things to fill it with, learn a new skill. But I think more often than not, it's easy to wallow in self-pity and laziness or whatever else it might look like. But today we can choose to fill the time by setting a foundation on Jesus to fly. Outwardly, we're in lockdown, but inwardly we can be Flying, physically we're cooped up, but spiritually we can be freer than we ever have been if we're putting our trust in Jesus. And the third one that I've been thinking through and trying to grow in is, is joy. And we often read in the Bible joy alongside conflict or challenge or suffering or anxiety. So it strikes me that when we're told in those moments to have joy, that joy cannot in any way be dictated by any of those things. It can't be dependent on maybe what we might call happiness. Joy is something that we can know despite what is going on. Joy is something that we can know because of God's spirit in us. It's not about what we can muster or we can do, but it's something that we have as our status as a follower of Jesus. If you've got the Holy Spirit in you, then you can know joy in and through all seasons. But actually I find myself feeling a bit rubbish, a bit down, a bit sad. And and the reality is that that's okay as well. It, it is okay to feel like that sometimes, but what is our posture? Is it to say, well, I'm gonna flap about a little bit, or is it that we're gonna try and soar with joy to say, because of the Holy Spirit, I can soar with joy. Romans 15 verse 13 says this, and it speaks into trust and joy and it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you might overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can have joy not because of what's in front of us, but because of the one who walks alongside us. As we close to say, storms don't shake God. He's not worried by them. Let's choose today to build our foundation on Jesus and see Jesus break in in the things that we find challenging and the things we know we want to grow in. For me, it's patience, trust and joy. And when we finally get to see each other again and go back to whatever the new normal is, maybe we'll have just grown in some of these things. Maybe we can be different people because we've used our time well. Not just getting by and getting through, but setting a foundation in Jesus that allows us to fly. 
We're going to respond now by singing Build My Life, uh, a song that is reminding us of all the stuff that we've talked about, that actually if we're building our lives on Jesus, that that is the firm foundation. So let's respond in song.
open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no one like you there is none beside Bring my heart for what breaks yours Everything I am for your kingdom's cause As I walk from earth into eternity As we close, let's pray together. God, I thank you for your unfailing love for us. I thank you that in you, Jesus, we have a firm foundation in all seasons of life. And God, I pray that the things that we've talked about tonight and the things that you've been stirring in our hearts, that you want us to begin to try and work on and fly in rather than just stumbling and getting through. God, I pray we'll remember that it's not about how hard we flap or strive, but it's about putting our trust in you, the one that sustains us, the one that gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And so, God, I pray this evening, and as we talk now in our connect groups, God, I pray that you will be changing and shaping us more and more into your likeness, that this won't be a pressure thing, but will be a releasing thing. In Jesus' name. Amen. of distraction You are calling me to truth drawing me to you 